Today's guest is a return guest. Her name is Sarah Banta. She is the owner of Accelerated Health Products in addition to the host of Accelerated Health. I think it's just podcast now. She said it, it used to be called Accelerated Health Radio and TV, and I've been on it a couple of times, but I'm about to go back on it again. So um, check her out. She's just like the consummate, like passionate, curious, smart, wants to know everything there is to know about the human body and then apply it in real life kind of person. Um, I mean, last I checked a while back, they had 350,000 listeners a month on her show, and I'm sure it's higher now. So really, really information packed. And that's what you'll find in our episode today. Um, just to give you some background on her, she hit rock bottom 15 years ago, suffering from Crohn's disease, hormonal issues, PCOS and heavy metal toxicity after Western medicine couldn't give her answers or solutions. She discovered natural solutions that actually worked. Um, and then when she was on that journey, she was hit with uh, her nine-year-old son's diagnosis of leukemia. So that's when she went really deep and found this sense of calling to help with health. Um, and today she uh, ser serves hundreds of thousands of people with cutting edge protocols, uh, scalar frequency based supplements, Chinese medicine, healing devices, and much more to detox, reset and rebuild mind, body and spirit. She has a degree from Stanford University in economics and psychology, Institute of Integrative Nutrition and the Invincible Wellness System. So yeah, she's pretty freaking smart and um, is just so well spoken on so many topics and health. So super happy to have her back on the show today. We'll go ahead and get into it. Here is Sarah Banta. Okay, so Sarah, welcome back to the show. Good to see you again. I'm so happy to be here. You're one of my favorite people, Tara. So oh, I love likewise. that. I, mean, I wish we were, we, we had like a, a life together outside. Yeah. Of but yeah, <laughs> we'll do what we can do and just help educate the peeps on something that we're both so passionate about. And that's the deeper levels of health. Yeah. You know, like what is actually going on inside of our bodies. And I think that's where we really resonate apart from the fact that we're both kind, loving people. Uh, <laughs> we really are nerdy about like, we want to know we're curious and that has led to a lot of eye opening education application being able to help others on that path is such a gift because we learn continuously as we take others along the journey because there's always these ringers right it's like whoa what's that yeah. i haven't seen that before and i don't know about you but that's like that like that's like i'm like a tiger on a stake with that i'm like ooh something new and challenging let's figure this out together and so um the timing of this episode is really perfect because i think that we're going to talk about unexplained weight gain. Okay. Or that. And in addition to that, like, why is it so hard for me to lose weight? Like what gives that whole thing? And, um, yesterday I happened to catch a woman who is like an influencer. She's got like 350,000 followers on Instagram and like a bajillion on other platforms. Right. And I saw that she had posted, She's like, I knew her from Utah, but she actually moved to Hawaii about the same time as me, different Island. So like, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, we're doing this like little path. Um, and I saw that she's like, I have, I have gained like 15 pounds in the last year or two. I work out six days a week. I eat high protein. I eat really well. I sleep, you know, like I do all the things and I'm just gaining weight and what gives. And I had some blood work done and I saw that my DHEA was really high and my progesterone was really low. And I'm sitting here thinking like, you know, I comment on it. I'm like, girl, like there are answers for you. Like you need a Dutch test. You need some deeper testing. We got to go a little deeper. And so I'm setting the stage on that, you know, of just like, I, I, unfortunately I feel like word on the street for women who aren't like super into the deeper levels of health, like you and I are professionally, it's just like, Okay, eat higher protein, track your macros, um, like work out more consistently, like, you know, drive harder into the same patterns that aren't getting you there, you know, and so <laughs> um, I would like to just pass this over to you. What are your thoughts on unexplained weight gain or body fat that is just like feels impossible to lose even when you're quote unquote doing all the right things? Yeah. I mean, I just came from a hot yoga class where we're strength training and all of that. And I love the burn. I love the sweat, but it's filled with women my age that have these bellies 
Mm-hmm. And you know, yeah. they're eating all the right things because if they've got the discipline to do the class I just did, you know, yeah. that they've got the discipline in the kitchen and all of that stuff. Uh-huh. So, and, and then you get to the, the state where anything I do is not working. So now I'm depressed, right? right? And, it, right. and then I'm depressed. So I'm so fat. And we, that's a whole nother podcast, the mental aspect yeah. of like self, um, you know, making it happen because you're just thinking those thoughts and you mm-hmm. talk a lot about that. Mm-hmm. So we're not necessarily going to get into the mind body connection, but that's a real thing, right? Yes. So, yes. So we're in a new world. Unfortunately, our food system has been hijacked. What yeah. worked four years ago doesn't work today. We're in a, an environment where we have the spike protein that has affected us. We'll get into that in a minute. We've also are iodine deficient. So iodine, if anyone follows me, they know that is like one of my biggest things I talk about because there's so many benefits to iodine and we are more depleted than ever before. It's not in our soils anymore. A lot of the iodine supplementations coming from Asia where they're, they've been exposed to Fukushima and Chernobyl and ironically, Tara, they've done studies with people in Hawaii because that's close to Japan, right? And Mm -hmm. those people have more radiation in them because of Fukushima. And so it's a real thing. So it affects the whole globe. Even even though we're not in Asia, it's affecting all of us. But iodine deficiency is the number one cause of mitochondrial failure. And when we're talking about weight gain, weight loss, longevity, brain health, anything. It's all about your mitochondrial health. You are only as healthy as your mitochondria. My daughter's 18 in high school. She goes, mom, the amount of girls and guys that are drinking monster drinks and Red Bull in class is through the roof. I'm like, you mean they're, they've just completely surpassed coffee. They are trying to get energy, right? Mm -hmm. Your iodine is needed for that cellular energy, the mitochondria, um, to boost that ATP in every mitochondria with Iodine, you get 36 ATP per mitochondria. Without it, you have two. That is a huge difference. So we're not getting it in our soils. And we're some of the supplementation in the salts, that's not working anymore because the salts are also filled with microplastics. So you've got, you're taking in toxins that are filling the iodine receptor sites and you're not even able to use the iodine that's in the salt. So that would be number one. And it is needed for your for your immune system, for your thyroid health. Um, And just a side story, most people who are getting their blood test and say, well, no, my thyroid's fine. And I just had this happen. I had, I'm doing this comprehensive um, test for health, natural natural health. And they did the blood test because they want to come on my podcast. And so I get this comprehensive blood test and they test my T4 and my TSH. And they said, did you know you're hyper? And I said, well, mm-hmm. you didn't test my T3. You didn't yeah. test my reverse T3. Right. Well, ironically, I did it a couple of weeks later because I wanted to know the answers. Yeah. My free T3 is actually on the lower side and my reverse T3 is too high. So mm-hmm. the first blood panel didn't tell me anything, right? Right. Um, and so that is one thing. So you need that iodine for the T3, T2, and T4. That's the two, three, and four molecules of iodine with tyrosine. And that's why I love my animal protein because tyrosine comes in animal protein. So iodine deficiency is a huge thing. And we, we can go into it deeper and later on, but I just want to touch on some of these other things, the xenoestrogens, they're in our food, our water and environment. Um, I've had my own husband where his testosterone has plummeted um, and he's having estrogen dominant symptoms. This is so this is not just for women. This is because of the herbicides, the pesticides, the plastics, parabens, all of that. You've got it in your makeup, your cleaning supplies. And I even in my own household, when we run out of the dish soap, my my husband will pull out the dawn. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You're washing the dishes with um, these xenoestrogens that you're eating your food off of. And that they don't, there are no calories in that Dawn. There's no calories in that. So we're not talking about counting calories, right? These things slow down your metabolism, slow down your thyroid, cause that weight gain that we're talking about. Then you have the radiation. 
we have not had our cell phones tested, like studies done on my iPhone 15. Um, the last test and studies that have been done were in like 1999. So I'm literally carrying around a computer, a su supercomputer. It's a part of my appendage all day long. And we're thinking it's not doing anything to us. Radiation scrambles your DNA. Radiation tells your body you're in a stress state. It's not saying I'm running for a tiger from a tiger or I'm going into a famine or I've had a fight with my husband or I'm just holding a cell phone. Your body just knows stress. Stress, what does that do? Increases reverse T3. I had a very stressful three months over summer. I'm not going to lie. And my, that's why I think my reverse T3 was high. Okay, it happens to the best of us. I do all of my meditation, my yoga, all that stuff. But sometimes stress gets to us. It causes that cortisol to increase, which causes that weight gain around the belly. So many of us women are suffering from that. Well, one problem, and Tara, I know you talk about this, is when you are over cardioing and doing too much cardio, especially as you're a pre perimenopause or menopausal woman, your ovaries are dying and your, your adrenals are taking over the production of your sex hormones. So that's more stress on your adrenals. So you are going to burn out your adrenals even quicker. So if I'm doing chronic cardio or I'm stressed out over here or what have you, that cortisol is going to go up even higher and it's going to put on that layer of fat around your expensive organs, your liver, your kidneys, because I don't know, we might be attacked by a tiger. I need that fat layer to protect my organs, right? So radiation is a huge thing. It causes leaky gut. It causes that visceral fat. It causes insulin resistance without eating a morsel of chocolate. We're not talking about carbs and fat and all of the, that stuff in, right, ain't anymore. We're talking about stress causing insulin resistance. And then dirty liver. Our livers can't keep up with what we're doing. Can't keep up with the xenoestrogens, with the with um, all of the plastics, with the heavy metals, with the fluoride. I just did a podcast on fluoride. The government even came out saying that they're linking fluoride in drinking water to a lower IQ in our children and to a lower IQ and behavioral issues in young kids when the mom was pregnant taking in fluoride, okay? We have to drink water. I live in, in Southern California. You think my water doesn't have fluoride in it? I've got filters, all I can do. But guess what else is connected? Our iodine has gone down. The fluoride has gone up. When you have every cell in your body has iodine receptors, Iodine, fluoride, bromide, and chlorine, chlorine are all in the halogen family in our um, on the periodic table. Go back to chemistry class in high school. So if you don't have enough iodine in your body, those fluoride, chlorine, and bromide um, particles are going to fit those nice little iodine receptor sites. Make your, your thyroid go down, be sluggish, calcify fluoride in your brain, you feel dumb, you feel this like cloud on you, brain fog, everything is sluggish. You don't have the energy to go work out. You don't have the energy to go work or be with your family. You're depressed. All of that happens um, without with that fluoride. Now that's just one example. Your liver also is the main detox organ synthesizing the estrogen binding proteins. If it's overloaded with toxins, it can't do, do its job correctly. Now, the other thing and how it's connected with your thyroid is the conversion from inactive T4 that we've talked about for your thyroid hormone into T3 goes, it happens in, in the liver mostly. So the other thing that happens in your liver, you are breaking down your fats and metabolizing fat and proteins. So our goal, you and I talk about, oh, we've got to eat tons of protein to build those muscles. Well, what happens if your liver cannot break down those proteins into amino acids and then build them back up to build that bicep, right? It doesn't yep. work. Yeah. So, and I actually had this happen to me. So we'll talk about the spike protein in a minute, but I was exposed to the spike protein in, in last January, never got sick, but what it does is it triggers other viral activity. Varicella virus is happening, Epstein-Barr, 
These are very common. Varicella virus got into my optic nerve. I couldn't see. My vision was blurry but it would come back up and back. And so I knew my eyesight was still good because sometimes I don't need glasses and then sometimes I can't even see a foot in front of me. And mm -hmm. so when we figured out what was going on, um, this was happening at the same time that I was eating a ton of calories, eating a ton of protein, eating my carbs, trying to gain weight, and I was losing muscle mass. My liver was suppressed because of the spike protein it affects the ACE2 receptor in the liver, and my liver could not break down those amino acids and use them. So my body was literally eating away at its own muscle. And for you women out there, hold on to that muscle after 40. It is expensive. It's hard to build back up. I've been working my tail off, and it's hard. So that is a real thing. And then the other thing that's happening with the spike protein, my 18 year old daughter, her periods um, were totally fine up until two years ago. Two years ago, during that period day, her pain went from a level four, like, eh, I feel awful, I'm going to school, to mom, hit me, I need to pass out, I cannot deal with this pain, sweating, throwing up, horrific. Then after it starting in this last May, it went to the point where she was actually feeling so nauseous and ill all month long. And she lost seven pounds. And she's a very petite girl trying to row, trying to build her muscles up. And she could not work out. She could not get out of bed. And we could not figure out what to do. One doctor wanted to put her on progesterone. Yes, her progesterone was low. But we went through an antiviral program because it was the spike protein. We used my accelerated silver, accelerated iodine. The iodine is not just for your thyroid. It's antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic, all of the things. We pinpointed that she had the varicella virus in her ovaries. She started getting a lump in her breast. Well, we then got that all, all um, straightened out and we're doing acupuncture as well. Tara, I don't know. I mean, you're a mom. When you suffer, it's one thing. When your child suffers, the world stops, right? And she's trying to, to just live life. And thank God it happened during summer. She wouldn't have been able to go to school for three months. So now we're waiting for her next menstrual cycle. But last month, she woke up, she went to work out, and she came home. She goes, oh, by, by the way, my period came. I go, wait, what? You're not like dying. And so we're getting better. But those are just two examples of how the spike protein's affecting our liver. Now that's on top of fatty liver disease, the processed foods. Processed foods, not real food. So even if you're eating an organic, ketogenic, low carb bar, protein bar, there's hidden ingredients in there that you don't know about. It's in a form that nature did not intend. And that is why we've been reaching for the carnivore diet or the keto diet or the paleo diet. We're trying to find answers and the answer is just in real food, right? Organic, real food, unadulterated. You've got endotoxins in the gut. That's that leaky gut. You That leaky gut, regardless of how many calories you're eating, can cause weight gain. The wrong gut bugs can cause weight gain. Um, we're going to get into some of the fat burning proteins versus stored uh, versus the fat storing proteins, carbs and fats. But one thing is the wrong proteins can actually trip up the gut pathogens, cause your body to be bloated, constipated, all the things in addition to put on on weight. Um, copper deficiency. So processed foods on their own deplete copper. And also the spike protein has depleted copper. And over the last five years, we've all been supplementing with zinc for our immune systems that depletes copper. Yes, we need zinc, but we need it in a, in a nice balance with copper. So copper is really important for fat burning. It blocks the polyol pathway, which converts glucose into sorbitol or fructose. And without enough copper, uric acid levels rise. And with when uric acid level goes up, insulin resistance goes up. Insulin resistance leads to weight gain, right? At the cellular level. So um, these 
these are the main things away from obviously overeating and getting into the Ben and Jerry's and all of that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are certain supplements you can use to help balance those things out. Now, number one, get rid of the processed foods. Number two, we want to focus on the right proteins, the right fats and the right um, carbs. And we're not on a low carb diet. We're on a real food diet. And depending on the health of where your body is, you can incorporate different foods. You know, I, I have a client right now who's just doing my weight loss program. He's doing the Accelerodyne Iodine, which is number one, a supplement called Accelerated Fast, Accelerated Thyroid. And he's like, well, I love my dairy. Do I have to give up my dairy? And I said, is, are you losing weight? Is it working for you? How do you feel? It goes, yeah, I'm losing weight. It's working for me. I said, then no need to change. But if you get to a plateau, then we'll get maybe a little more strategic, right? But the Accelerodyne iodine is the number one way to increase that fat burning, increase that oxidation of fat. And it also is needed for protein synthesis. 96% of the United States is, is deficient in iodine. And you need it to increase that ATP. When you have more ATP per mitochondria, you are going to have the energy to go work out. You're going to have the energy to do life and also boost your mood and just your resting metabolic rate. So one thing to think about is most of you, if you took your temperature, it's not 98.6. It's supposed to be, but we're all suboptimal with our thyroid health. We're all at a level of hypothyroidism and, and you want your temperature to be higher. The doctor will tell you, oh, 96.7, that's normal. Um, it's not. So you need that iodine for optimal, optimizing your thyroid function, boosting that ATP. But this is the other thing with all those toxins I just talked about, you've got the cell membrane, which is the brain of the cell. The um, cell membrane has an iodolipid value, iodine and fat value, saturated fat and unsaturated fat. Saturated fat is more stable, so it needs less iodine. The unsaturated fat part of the cell membrane is unstable, more unstable, so it needs a little higher iodine value. But you need iodine for that cell membrane to get the nutrients you're taking into the body, into the cell, and the toxins the xenoestrogens, the lead, the mercury, the radiation, all the things that I mentioned out of the cell, okay? You need the iodine inside the cell to boost that ATP in the mitochondria. You need the iodine outside the cell to cleanse the blood and let the liver do its job, right? Because the whole problem here is that we have the artificial sweeteners, the lead, mercury, and the fluoride, the xenoestrogens, the spike protein, all of these things that are asking your liver to do this work. And it says, no, I can't. I'm done. Well, iodine is a huge part of that. And iodine also, when you high dose it, this is a, a, a concept called chemical displacement. So if we have enough iodine in our body, there's no room for that fluoride, bromide, and chlorine and the heavy metals, right? The, those toxins come in and they try to find receptor sites to, to hide in. And they say, well, there's no place for me to go. So I'm just going to go out the body. Um, most women who had breast cancer actually have high levels of bromide and are iodine deficient. Dr. David Brownstein has done many studies on this. He's been on my show if you want to go back and listen. Um, but it, 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 he is recommending higher doses of iodine because of what we're going through. And then you, you all, we've also seen an improvement. I have to be very careful with how I say this, but it, iodine helps mitigate the spike protein damage. It also helps with that estrogen dominance. So that, that is number one. Um, then, you know, I mentioned the accelerated fast, you and I both are not so much on the fasting bandwagon anymore. There's a place for it and all of that. But what this supplement does is it cleanses your liver on a daily basis. It stabilizes the blood sugar. 
it helps you fast without stressing your body. So it calms your nervous system down. So you don't have the hormetic stress from, um, ex from fasting. And then you can use it. To, it also increases that ATP, helps um, also get you into ketosis so that you can be metabolically flexible. We don't always want to be into keto. We want to be able to burn the glucose. We want to burn the fat, all of that, right? So I do a lumen test every single morning. And it's like it, before I thought, oh, I want to be in level one every day, all day long, which means that I'm in ketosis. And I love when I see it to go to five and then go back to one that I'm burning carbs and I'm burning um, you know, fat and, and my body's not just dependent on one, I'm metabolically flex flexible. So you can use it on any diet that you're using. Of course, I'm, I want to say whole foods, right? Um, I mentioned the thyroid. And so the last supplement I'll just mention is the accelerated thyroid because it is the most comprehensive natural solution that um, takes Ayurvedic herbs, takes cutting edge glandular, um, and amino acids and the, the nutrients that are needed to support the thyroid, essential peptides, all of that. And then we enhance it with scalar frequency to help restore thyroid health. So most people, I actually just had a client get off of her thyroid medication and switch to the Accelerodyne Iodine, the Accelerated Thyroid. She feels better. She's actually lost a little more weight. And um, she was so scared because everyone's so attached to their medication, right? Mm -hmm. So- so those would be the supplements. But when you look at the foods, so let's talk about protein, 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 but proteins are not all equal. You've got, you've got the fat storing protein. Sometimes those protein powders undergo an 80% conversion into sugars, your body. So you're gaining muscle and fat at the same time. The BCAAs, they only have three of the essential amino acids. Your body needs all 20. They need them at the same time. They need them in the right ratios and you're not getting that. And so the BCAAs, they, people aren't taking them as much anymore. They usually convert into sugar. You've got whey protein, pea protein, soy protein. These proteins only utilize about 18% of their amino acid um, to make the new proteins with the remaining 82% converting into sugar usually. And those ingredients could cause estrogen levels to increase, leaky gut, high histamine response. If you're out there and you're like, gosh, this is so weird, never had allergies in my life, never been um, sensitive to histamines, and all of a sudden you are, that spike protein has increased histamines in all of us. So you have to be careful with pea protein, full of mold, full of high histamines, all of that. Now, this is where you're gonna wanna shoot me. So don't shoot the messenger. Chicken, conventional beef, turkey, and pork. Now, like I said, if you have no symptoms and you're getting your results, you don't need to listen to me. But these meats, uh, meats contain not only the high levels of omega-6 inflammatory fats, but they, they contain amyloids. And those amyloids are misfolded proteins from being in crowded conditions. It's not the chicken's fault. And they cannot get broken down by the liver into amino acids. They're getting deposited in the brain, causing Alzheimer's and dementia. They're in the gut, letting the bad guys take over the good guys, causing E. coli, salmonella, all of that stuff. We want those bad guys and the good guys to play nice in the sandbox down there. But the these amyloids trigger the bad guys to be able to take over the good guys. Um, they will cause fat gain, lower your overall ATP, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So you might be eating that skinny white meat and it's causing more fat gain than having that bison ribeye. Um, so that that's something to think about. Farm-raised fish, they're eating soy and corn. You're eating what you ate, ate right? So the, those are inflammatory foods. But what are the fat burning pro, uh, proteins? So I love to supplement with um, essential amino acids. I carry a supplement called MAP. It is the, uh, the OG of essential amino acids. But any essential amino acids, they have a 99% utilization. Now this is a supplement. This is not a food. So this supplements your real protein and that's the wild animal protein bison, venison, deer, or um, elk, wild fish, 
they provide the B vitamins, the iron, the magnesium on top of easily digestible proteins that your body literally goes, oh, I love this. I want it. I want more. Um, if you feel full when you're eating your proteins, you might need to supplement with enzymes or you just might have been eating the wrong proteins. And, and the, these other wild proteins are much more easily assimilated in the body. The liver does well. When my daughter was going through her situation, we cut her down to only bison and venison. She had to be on a very low fat diet um, because the fat is very hard for the liver to process if the liver's backed up, right? So then you go to the fats. Well, fat, we're all supposed to be eating tons of fat because of keto. Well, most of us, because of our livers, can't process fat. So if you're nauseous when you eat fat, your liver needs some help. You might need to do a liver cleanse. But I always focus on the proteins and filling in with the right carbs and, and then filling in with the fat according to my weight gain or weight loss goals. I eat the fat, the gristle in my meat, but I don't pour a bunch of butter and olive oil on my food. You want to stay away from the processed foods, the imitation butters, the, the canola oils, all of the seed oils. I know seed oils is a huge hot topic right now. Um, was it a problem 50 years ago? No, but our diets are so overloaded with the seed oils now that just putting a little more is fuel to the fire on top of the xenoestrogens, the plastics, the lead, the mercury, all this other stuff our body's trying to, to deal with. And those toxins and those fats overstuff the cells. And even though there's no carbs or sugar in these fats, it tell the body tries to put the sugar into the cells and it says, no, I'm overstuffed. You go somewhere else. That's insulin resistance, right? At the level of the cell. So too much of the wrong fats can cause insulin resistance. So yeah. that's something to think about the fat burning fats. You want to focus on butter, ghee, organic cold pressed olive oil, and then getting into the carbs for, as the last one, get rid of the processed foods. That's what we're talking about. Get rid of the processed foods. You can eat you can eat carbs. I love my squashes, spaghetti squash, butternut squash, the the zucchinis, sweet potatoes, all of those, even rice. Sometimes rice works for me, sometimes it causes me causes gut issues for me. So test on yourself. But it's not about the carbs. It's not about how many carbs you're eating. I'm eating a ton of carbs and my metabolism has increased with my carb intake. I focus on that protein one gram per body weight or pound of body weight. And then I fill in with the carbs and then a little bit of the fat. So I know I just went on and on and on. Um, I hope that was okay as yeah, far as I beautiful. wanted to just make sure it was all just concise. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And I, you know, kind of, it gives a great overview of, you know, we're talking about unexplained weight gain or inability to lose weight. And just hearing all that is just an immersion experience on, hey, this is deeper than just you need more self-control or you need to exercise more. And I want to kind of go through some of these. Okay, so let's talk about the thyroid for a second, okay? And you know what I don't like is I've um, I've heard people uh, kind of make fun of other people. Like, I don't know, I hear this in like kind of the younger, oh, she thinks she has a thyroid thing. Like, oh my gosh, right? And I'm like, um... Actually, she she probably does. <laughs> you know, it's pretty common. But I want to hit on this thyroid thing. I iodine and many other minerals and vitamins because, okay, get this. I, this is I had to pull this up. This is from um, Yale School of Medicine's website, and they're talking about a 2021 study. This was including collaborators from Yale School of Public Health, the Mayo Clinic, and the University of Arkansas. And they found out in this 2021 study that 23 million Americans who are actively taking Synthroid, it's a T4, approximately 21 out of those 23 million, approximately 21 million, so 90%, likely don't need the prescription. Mm -hmm. Did you guys hear that? Okay, because I don't, I know you, because here's the thing, like she's, so Sarah's talking about iodine. I've been doing hair mineral analyses for quite a while, many years now with clients. Anytime I have a client that's hypothyroid, you know, I really like to see a Dutch test, which is saliva and urine on how their 
hormones, their stress hormones and sex hormones are functioning, which you went into, um, and also a hair mineral analysis. And I haven't ever had anybody who has just like perfectly balanced mineral ratios. I've had some people who are like pretty good, but that is extremely rare. It's usually, excuse my language, but a complete and total shit show. And I was one of them too. And I'm pretty into health. I was so magnesium deficient and had some other deficiencies because, okay, on the vein of eating whole foods, like you were talking about, which absolutely now we're screwed even more because of our soils. So this is from one of Chris Kresser's articles. Like, I don't know, this is kind of old. This is from 2020. And he's talking about the uh, 2004 study. 2004, so this is 20 years ago. 20 years ago, 43 garden crops in the United States were analyzed to compare nutritional content in 1950 versus 1999. So over 20 years ago. It says that uh calcium phosphorus iron riboflavin vitamin c were lower up ranging from six to 38 percent and i have seen in real time by going to a regenerative farm in iowa that i visited where they have a mineral testing lab on their facility and they did a like slideshow presentation for me i went and interviewed for my podcast it was so interesting they bought store-bought conventional, they bought conventional, they bought organic, and they, they're they really just, they got into the mineral thing because they wanted their stuff to taste good because they sold to high-end chefs. They fell into regenerative agriculture through just trying to make their stuff taste better. Imagine that. So but some of the stuff from the store, like I'm talking, some of these minerals were none. They didn't have any of them on the, this is real time in Iowa, going to a grocery store, picking up some organic or conventional stuff, none on some of these. And so coming back to the thyroid, if I can just share real quick, like I, I like, I wrote these down guys. Cause I'm like constantly referring to this little no thing in my notes when I'm going through people's, you know, minerals and their thyroid labs and stuff. So to make TSH, you need, I mean, obviously this is a short synopsis is that everything is so multifactorial, but to make TSH, you need protein, magnesium, B12, and zinc are big hitters. Then that stimulates your thyroid gland to make T4, the inactive thyroid hormone, and you need iodine, B2, which is riboflavin, um, and vitamin C, your big hitters. And then to convert T4 into the T3, you need selenium, which I'm seeing dra to kind of concur with what you're saying. I'm seeing a lot of low iodine and a lot of really low selenium. Um, and then in order to get that T3 into the cell, you need vitamin D and vitamin A, and you need to not be insulin resistant, all these things. But yeah. this is what I just wanted to say <laughs> if you think you have a thyroid issue or you think something might be wrong and you go to western medicine and they test your thyroid and they're going to do what they did with sarah and this was actually a more functionally one and they didn't even do the full panel um sorry guys <laughs> just be gotta be real um you're going to get half of the equation of your thyroid anyway right you're not going to get all of the steps it's like somebody saying like looking at a house that you completely built and looking at pictures of it when you first started and being like, Oh, it's not good. And you're like, yeah. wait, but that's not the whole thing. Like, hold on. Like, uh, okay. So, and then they're going to put you on a thyroid medication, which I'm not saying that you never need a thyroid medication. I'm just trying to get word on the street. Like this system is not bueno. This is from more Mayo Clinic in Yale that they're saying 90% in 2021 of these people on Synthroid didn't need to be on it. Oh my gosh, because they don't ask why. They don't say, hmm, I wonder why your thyroid is low. Actually, we don't even know if it's low. We just tested your TSH, maybe T4. Right. You're lucky you got even T4. That was a step up. Usually it's just T TSH, which isn't even a thyroid hormone. They're just saying if it's really, really high, that means you must, we're going to guess that you must have low output and it, that's why the stimulating hormone is so high. It's unbelievable. Well, so that, need... that, that T4 <laughs> medication is actually going to drive up your reverse T3 if it's not converting right. the right. liver to your T3. And the other thing, it's, it's not that these people just don't need that medication, they probably are on antidepressants as well because most people right. on antidepressants are hypothyroid and they don't have energy in the brain. Right. Or some other deficiency, iron, or you never, they don't even test. They're just like, you feel sad. Okay, here's your drugs. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm not against these things. It's just, 
they are not being prescribed with integrity. That is just how it is. Like how I don't see how you could give someone a thyroid medication without even checking their mineral status. Let's see if you have the basic building blocks to even be able to make this thing work appropriately, but that's not how Western medicine is set up. That's why you have to go functional. You have to go to a functional medicine doctor, a naturopath, a functional nutritionist like us, something along those lines, or you're never going to find out what is actually going on. Oh, hey, how's your gut? How is your liver? Can your liver function? Do you have enough stomach acid to actually cue enough bile to come into your stomach and process these things or to get large chunks of food through your system appropriately so you can absorb your nutrients and not get bacterial overgrowth? Western medicine, they don't even, they don't even know this stuff. I'm just, I'm not trying to be a jerk. It's like, it's just the truth. It's how it's that they don't even know. They don't, that that's not the system. So I appreciate you bringing up so many of these points because obviously I'm getting a little heated because it is a, it's a frustration because so few people know. That's why I have this podcast. That's why I do so much social media work. Cause it's just like, dude, people don't even know what's available to them. So like, yeah, I'm kind of shouting from the rooftops. Like there is so much available to you. And then just understanding, hey, like you were talking about, when you start to go through menopause, your ovaries start closing down for shop. Your adrenals can make a little bit of estrogen, a little bit of sex hormones, but not very much. So if you are taxing the crap out of your adrenals, like they can only do so much and you're just going, you're already going to go into a lower estrogen. That's just going to happen unless you do HRT. But right. like you're, you're just going, you're stressing the crap out of like your, now you have only one, one source of both your adrenal hormones and your sex hormones. And then you're going to go do like marathons and, and just constantly go, 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 and not look into any of your mineral or vitamin status to see how your body's doing. Your liver's all congested. Livers, I just, one more thing. I just got to like kind of cheer for some of the things you said. Dude, the liver. First of all, if you have never looked up one of those cadaver anatomy videos, yeah, I watch those. Me and my kids like are super fascinated by that. It's kind of like get over it, see what a human body actually looks like. But if you've never seen that, look, take a look, like look up on social media because there's some really interesting accounts where they show these things. Look at the size of a liver. I'm like, why are we underrating that? That thing is huge. It's huge. It's such an important organ. It does so much it both cleanses and creates it is a massive producer and i'm seeing clogged up livers like crazy too i mean i think gallbladder removal surgery is like the number one i think or is up there for one of the most common surgeries there is why does that happen it starts with your liver is so congested like we have to be proactive about our livers as we age it's like never cleaning your air filter in your car you know we got to be proactive yeah. about that. So I appreciate you bringing that up too. Story about that. My best friend, she has a child that is very severely handicapped. So her whole life has been all about her child, right? Not mm -hmm. taking care of herself, mm -hmm. eating, mm -hmm. not so great, whatever. Mm -hmm. She had probably 10,000 gallstones and the doctor wanted to take her out her gallbladder. She did my liver cleanse every two weeks, got all of the gallstones out and the doctor's like, you're good. You're mm -hmm. good. But mm -hmm. what's happening now is because of the spike protein, people are seeing cholesterol levels go up, right? And more nausea, more hormonal balances. So these are the signs. You're sluggish. You're getting you're un that unexplained weight gain, um, insulin resistance, high uric acid levels, skin breakouts, because your body, if it can't process those toxins through the liver, it's they're going to come out the skin right? Because your skin's your largest organ. Um, waking up in the middle of the night, that's a sign your liver, it needs needs some love. Mm -hmm. And I'm super excited that we are coming out with accelerated liver care. Um, I've been carrying another liver supplement to go with my liver cleanse for years and years, which is a great supplement. But the accelerated liver care is, it will be the best liver supplement in the world with the most rare herbs that's no no one's using and the right combination master herbal 
herbalist has put this together and increasing the chi and the life force of the actual supplement. What the people don't understand too, Tara, about the supplement industry is a lot of companies will just sprinkle in an ingredient just so they can put it on the list, it's right? It's so bad. Ever it, like so much. That's like 90%. It's yeah. so bad, dude. It's painful when you know I, the insides. Know. It's, and, it's, and and you could and they're allowing mold and bacteria counts right. in these supplements. So here you're taking maybe something something for allergies, and it's actually giving you allergies because it's got mold in it, right? Mm -hmm. So you get what you pay for with supplements. You think that the guy selling something for sixty dollars doesn't want to be competitive with the twenty dollar person? There's a reason the other one is twenty bucks. If if like the good brands and you know people who are doing it like you guys are are selling, you know, you're you they're going to make it as affordable as they possibly can. They want to sell product, but if it costs more, it costs more because it's freaking good. Right. <laughs> you know, that's just exactly. how it is. <laughs> But yes, you want to, with your liver, like for my daughter, um, the one doctor wanted to put her on progesterone and I had my other practitioner mentor say, no, progesterone and hormones are fat based. Her liver was so backed up that mm. it wouldn't have been able to process the progesterone, let alone do anything with well, it. She's so young. You would want to stimulate no. progesterone, not exactly. replace it at that age. I know. And <laughs> It was such a hard situation because she was in so much pain yeah. and struggling. And I want, yeah. I wanted the quick fix, right. but we did it the right way. And now she's corrected the situation and her body is a miracle. Our bodies are a miracle and they will um, take care of any disease. I always tell my kids, all disease is reversible, except for your teeth. Don't mess up your teeth because they don't come back, <laughs> but everything else is reversible. You can live a better 50 year old life with less weight than you did at 30. Mm -hmm. It is possible. Mm -hmm. I have more energy today Me than too. I did when I was 20. Right? Way more, way more. I feel way better and energized and uh, athletic and all of that. So yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, I wanted to add a couple more things on your fluoride thing. I just had to say this. Okay. So if you're like, what's the deal with the fluoride? What's, what's going on? If you Google, like, is fluoride really concerning? You are going to find a bunch of stuff that is like, no, it's absolutely not concerning. It is completely fine. In fact, it's like saving teeth and yeah, there's all that data. Okay. But you need to go deeper. Don't just go off your first Google search page result, go deeper. And here's the thing is like the reason the fluoride is in the water that they say is to help our, us have strong teeth. But when you start to get deeper into the negative impacts of this excess of fluoride that is added to the water, you're like, okay, so the whole purpose is just for teeth. I really encourage you to look into um, like toothpaste, like Boca with a K or some of these ones that use that um, nano hydroxy appetite that can also remineralize the teeth. I'm a big fan of like xyl xylitol toothpaste and the ones with the nano hydroxy appetite, because like, dude, when your toothpaste says don't swallow harmful, if swallowed, I want you to just think yeah. about all the sublingual supplements. There are most people know what a lipo Zomal or sublingual where you let it absorb through the tissues. Okay. So your crest or your Colgate is saying harmful if swallowed, but you're letting it sit there in your mouth and you know, you're freaking swallowing some of it and you no one, no one thinks that's a problem, you know? And so look deeper into that and consider some of these because that nano hydroxy appetite has been found to be very powerful. I looked it up. I did, I did my, I was curious. It is really awesome for remineralizing the teeth. So look into that route if you haven't. And then the last thing I just kind of want to comment on from what you're saying was um, Dr. Alan Christensen has his thyroid reset diet, right? And you've probably read it. He, I saw him speak in an event and he had some interesting things to say in terms of having the proper amount of iodine. So addressing either X and I don't know if you have thoughts on that because I, so I kind of wanted to bring this up, having too much or too little. I personally have never, you know, I've been running these hair mineral analyses for five or six years. I've never seen anyone yet have too much personally, but I know that they ran that on a lot of people. So I'm not like discrediting that. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Cause I, I find it interesting, right? It's like, okay, he's finding people with too much um, iodine from like all these, like, you know, white breads and things where cereals and stuff where iodine is added. I was curious if you have any thoughts on that. So I don't want to pick on him specifically, but Dr. Brownstein and I go into the myth, okay. the myth okay. 
the people like him that are promoting no iodine, which is just crazy because well, he's not promoting no iodine. He's promoting like the proper amount, like right. either too high or too low could be problematic. Um, iodine deficiencies increased thyroid issues have increased. So, I, that's what I've right? seen. Yeah. And Dr. Brownstein has done studies. There are multiple studies. I have an article on my website. It's called um, blood accuracy facts about iodine. And it talks about the history of the different studies. There was one study that showed a temporary hypothyroidism for six for a very short period of time in your numbers. So you arise in your TSH. What is TSH? TSH is a thyroid stimulating hormone. It's a pituitary hormone, right? So what's going on is you take start taking iodine and your whole body wakes up, not just your thyroid, but all the little cells in your toes and your fingers is waking up going, wait a second, I want some of that. Boom. Get rid of it, <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah. then it will, that will come down. But what you notice is that no one that is supplementing with iodine and has a rise in TSH has symptoms of hypothyroidism. And this was the, the girl that I was just talking about who um, took, got off her medication, got on the iodine and the accelerated thyroid. She goes, Sarah, my doctor's freaking out because my TSH is high. I go, how do you feel? She goes, I feel awesome. <laughs> and regardless of iodine or thyroid, in general, you are your best doctor. How do you feel? Yeah, right? Yeah. What are That's your so are, underrated? Right? Your is your hair falling out? Are your eyebrows thinning? Yeah. Um, is your skin dry? Are you retaining water? Is your immune right. system low? Yeah, you got a thyroid problem. Mm -hmm. But I have not had one person taking my iodine in higher doses come to me saying it has pushed me into Hashimoto's. Nice. I've had people say know. it's actually cured my Hashimoto's. Hmm. Now I'm not claiming that. I'm right. just saying those have been some testimonials. Interesting. Um, it is the number one iodine supplement in the United States and people come to me for their iodine. There, there, I have written so many articles on this topic because of what you, your question, because of yeah. playing yeah. the devil's advocate. Um, right. So many studies have, there was that one study that showed something and it was never replicated. And, but it, instead they were do, giving little school girls dosages like 20 times what I'm talking about. And it healed their, their goiters and it healed their thyroid issues with no, not one girl having a, a negative reaction. So mm. please refer wow. to my website with those, nice. those articles because it's all out cool. there. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. And then um, last question, because I don't know. So because if you're wondering where you're at on some of these minerals like selenium and iodine and magnesium and zinc and copper and like some of these really big hitters on thyroid function. Um, and also just like you're saying, it's not just thyroid. It's like the whole body. It's your cells. Like you got to have healthy cells. Um, I personally use upgraded formulas tests. Do you guys have a hair mineral analysis or a way to test levels? Okay. Cause I didn't want to, you know, recommend them if you guys yeah. have that too. Yeah. But, um, if you guys want to find out, I do do, that's the same thing I use with my clients. And I even have the, uh, the dietitians there who are nutritionists or whatever, <laughs> do the consultation for my clients too, because the labs are very difficult to analyze and you kind of want someone who knows things that you couldn't even think to ask. That's like knees deep in this stuff all day. So I would really recommend getting the test and the consult with them. Um, and then, you know, can consider also some of Sarah's stuff because, you know, you can listen to some of our previous episodes, but she really gets into like just how awesome they are in terms of their, uh, they're using frequencies and you know what I mean? She's real into it. So, um, we'll send you back there, but that's a good way to find out if you're curious that you actually don't have to have a coach. You could just retest with them and do it that way. Or if you want someone to guide you along, like obviously there's people like us, but, um, 
upgrade. Well, I'll put that in the show notes, upgraded formulas. And they, they came on the podcast that I have a coupon and it's inside out 15 is that can go off of both the test and consult. So just FYI, if you guys want to find out, I would recommend find, you got to find out stuff, yeah. you know, or if you just freaking know, you're like, uh, yeah, I definitely have hypothyroidism, you know, um, still like why do you have hypothyroidism like find go deeper into finding out like what is actually going on so that's one step and you know obviously like if you don't want to spend the money on that try supplementing some iodine or you know some of the things that build thyroid and see if it makes a difference you know because sometimes i have to go that route with people because they're like i can't afford testing i'm like okay well just take this and see it's not that expensive see if it makes a difference yeah. <laughs> you can go that route too there could be a million different reasons why your thyroid's low right and so and and on my website I, i've written articles like a checklist okay how's your stress how's mm -hmm. your sleep you know, what mm -hmm. plastics are you being exposed to? Are you drinking fluoride? Right. All of that stuff. Yeah, and nice. you're like, oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I don't even need to supplement. Maybe it's just, a, I need to pull something out of my lifestyle, right? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Oh, Sarah, we could go on all day. As you can see, guys, <laughs> that's why Sarah and I like to jive on the podcast because we're just nerds. And uh -huh. cool, we're cool nerds. We're the best kind of nerds. <laughs> All right. Sarah, any last things you want to direct them to or? I would just say if you're looking for some more, if I've like piqued your interest in something, I have free group coaching. I post daily. You can ask your questions. You've heard something here and you're like, wait a second. What did you say about this? It's on Telegram. It's uncensored. I have been known to be taken down on um, on YouTube <laughs> because I say things that they don't like. But yeah. on Telegram, I'm able to say anything I, I need nice. to. So that's a great place to go. All of the links and the articles and everything are on my website at sarabantahealth.com. Okay. And just on the Telegram, they need to click the link on your website is the easiest yeah. way. Okay. And I okay. can send that to you as well. You can okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And then make sure you check out all of her accelerated health products and her podcast, um, accelerated health accelerated. radio. Actually, now we just changed the name okay. accelerated health with Sarah Banta. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And she has so much good information and I've been on there a few times. A couple and you're times. coming back and I'm coming back. So if you subscribe, then you can see me and be like, Oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, Tara.